You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Courage to Overcome with your host, Cheryl Jennings. Each week, Cheryl will feature and discuss the many challenges of those living with disabilities, along with the various issues that are faced by their families that are caring for them. So now, please welcome the host of Courage to Overcome, Cheryl Jennings. Welcome to tonight's show, Courage to Overcome. I'm so glad that you're taking time to come and listen to our program tonight. I know it's a very exciting time for most people. I've been traveling today, and I have passed so many places to buy fireworks. And the funny thing is that as we were driving through many parts of the country, it was pouring down rain, and we were thinking, oh, dear, they're not going to be able to do any fireworks. And then we were listening to the radio on parts that are so dry, they're not allowed to do fireworks. So I don't know how this is going to be for a year of fireworks. But... The wonderful thing is that we have the opportunity to get together and try to learn some things about people who have shown so much courage in the challenges that they faced. And this program centers on trying to find what is it that gave someone courage to overcome a challenge they had, and then what lessons did they learn that they feel like maybe somebody else could really benefit from knowing Because sometimes as we are going through life, we're all going to face different kinds of problems. But if we only knew the person that had faced a challenge similar to what I'm going through, I feel like I can connect to that person. I can learn things from them that would maybe save me a lot of time in a lot of hard knocks. And just knowing and understanding a little bit about the situations that they have gone through what lessons were hardest to learn. Maybe they found out where you can get some uh, resources or maybe they know of support groups or maybe they know of some tricks or some tips that can help me to take better care of myself. And for that very reason, we like to share with our audience so many people that we find that are just amazing and have so much to contribute to our lives and make it better for us. And tonight I have one of those very special people that I have known of, first of all, through a mutual friend, but I'm looking forward to hearing so much from him about some of the journeys that he's had and the lessons that he has learned. And I know that Gary King is the author of a book that is fabulous called The Happiness Formula. And I do want Gary tonight to be able to tell us a little bit about why he wrote that book, a little bit about some of the things that he's learned as he's gone through challenges. So I hope that you will have a pencil and a piece of paper and you will be able to sit and really focus on some of the lessons that he's going to teach us tonight. Gary is an amazing man. I have heard so many different things about experiences that he's gone through. So I know we're going to all enjoy tonight's program. And I truly do want you to know that if you'd like to reach out to us at any time, ask a question, that feel free to call in. And the number will be given out different times through this evening. But the number is 866-451. One four five one, And I'm sure that Gary or I would be glad for you to call in. And I do want to tell you, too, that if you're interested in getting his book, it's on Amazon. It's called The Happiness Formula. And as I've told you before, I have a book that came out in December, and it's called It Takes Courage to Be a Caregiver. And 
truly some of the last couple of weeks of my life, I've gone through a lot of challenges with uh, family members. And so I know it takes a lot of courage. And sometimes we have to fight battles we wish we didn't have to fight. And we go through many steps for getting something accomplished that is difficult. And if you are not in a family right now that has someone that you're caring for, I just want you to listen to some of the things that others have gone through because we know that we are aging in population, that many baby boomers right now are caring for parents who are in their 80s, 90s, or even have crossed over the 100-year line, but they also have children and grandchildren that they want to enjoy. And so there are a lot of extra steps that are involved in how to manage that. And then also we have families who are taking care of our precious children who have special needs. And I'm always finding the stories of one more person that's just absolutely just takes my, a tug at my heart. But we, we also are sometimes called into action to take care of spouses who may have served in a war and have PTSD, or they get some kind of an illness that requires you to care for them. So this is a program really focused on the needs of caregivers and trying to offer support, encouragement, tips, and anything that we can learn from those guests who are on our program. And tonight, I just want to say briefly, just welcome to our program, Gary. And I'd like for you just to tell us a a little bit about you. I know we don't have very long before we go to our first break. So tell us just a little bit about something that you think would help us to understand you a little bit more. Well, here's well, first off, Cheryl, it's it's a real honor to be on your show. It's a pleasure to be on your show. And so here's an encapsulated version of me. I spent 25 years in the personal development industry worldwide. Um, I've interviewed thousands of people. I've spoken in schools, prisons, third world countries. I've read 2,200 books. Um, um, wow. I am con- constantly doing research. Um, I was a... A lot of people don't know this. I was a professional race driver in power boats for 16 years. I was an international artist for 14 years, traveled all over the world for 14 years, um, doing um, huge sand sculptures. Um, wow. For governments of, governments of con- Japanese government, uh, uh, International Performing Arts Festival in Singapore. Um, my background is extremely diverse. I'm what's called a divergent thinker, so I'm constantly expanding my horizons, Um, and I, as you mentioned, I wrote a book called The Happiness Formula. It is on Amazon. It is based, it's modeled after Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, very, very well-known book all over the world. Right. So it's modeled after that. So the first third of it is autobiographical, and then the rest of it is is um, how do you rise above whatever the situation is and never, ever choose to become a victim? Never. So my second book, which I'm in the process of starting to write, is called The Awakening. Um, living a healthy, happy life inside out. <laughs> wow, rather than that is great. Outside <laughs> in. So I love it. Um, yeah. That, well, I um, am just. I'm one of your fans, and I am so delighted that you would want to be on the program, and for us to be able to learn from you because I just love the fact that you've had such a varied experience, so that you can share with us from different perspectives lessons yes. that you've learned. So while we go to our first break in just a second, I want you to get a pencil and sit down where it's quiet, comfortable. Listen to what Gary has got to share with us because it's going to be an amazing night. And again, you're listening to Courage to Overcome. This is a program focused on helping you learn how to overcome challenges you may face by learning how others 
have overcome their challenges. We will be back in just a moment. We'll take our first break right now. Thank you for tuning in. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Psychologist, master certified coach, and CEO of the executive and organizational development firm True North Leadership, Dr. Relly Nadler brings his expertise in emotional intelligence to keynotes, consulting, coaching, and training. He is the author of Leader's Playbook and Leading with Emotional Intelligence that lays out tips and tools for effective leadership. Dr. Nadler has designed multi day executive boot camps for high achievers in Fortune 500 companies and has coached CEOs, presidents and their staff and developed and delivered innovative leadership programs for such organizations as Anheuser-Busch, BMW, MCI, EDS, DreamWorks Animation, the U.S. Navy and Vanguard Health Systems. To learn more and get your free iPhone app highlighting his tools with videos, leadership keys, visit www.truenorthleadership.com today. Okay, folks, get ready. Buckle your seatbelts because we're going to have an amazing program tonight. Gary King is our guest, and I have just been anxiously waiting to get to interview him. He wrote the book, The Happiness Formula, and as he told us before the break, he has had quite a life and lots of experiences. And so now I'm going to let Gary just take off with an intro that you will be just fascinated with with. So, Gary, take it from here. Well, thanks, Cheryl. All right, so I want to start off with a segment that I call What If? So, what if you were born with a birthmark on your face and it was predominant that translated into you being ugly? So, you had body image issues. Um, Then at five years old, you were publicly shamed by your parent to the degree of developing tremors and extreme insecurities developed a core belief that your father did not like or love you. At 17 years old, what if you were in a home invasion and you were almost beat to death while unconscious and left to die? At 20 years old, what if you were guilted into visiting your father who had had a heart attack, was hospitalized, went to visit him two days before his release, You were in the hospital room for 90 seconds in the room talking with him, and he died while you were standing there. You were convinced you caused his death. You caused him to have another heart attack. It happened to be Mother's Day. You had to find a phone, call your mother on Mother's Day, and tell her what happened. And for 35 years, you carried that belief. Then what if you got in a relationship with a sociopath without the awareness, and as a result of being emotionally abused, you decided to take your own life? What if at 37 years old, you accidentally ran over and killed a five-year-old child? Charges were filed, overwhelming guilt, no therapy, and once again, decided to take your own life. What if at 38 years old, you had a near-death experience? You almost died. You came out of your physical body with complete consciousness, looked down at your body as if it was a vessel or a vehicle. What if at 40 years old, you were diagnosed with RSD, an incurable, untreatable, horribly painful disease? RSD stands for reflex sympathetic dystrophy. 
What if at 50 years old you were diagnosed with a malignant melanoma over your heart and refused the surgery? What if at 67 years old your only child took his life while you were on a business trip? And that was the end of the family history. Wow. So that is an encapsulated version of me. That's an enca- And I say encapsulated because in between all those things are 25 other things in between them. So how does one not become a victim of all of those things? How do you rise above those, that set of circumstances? Because those circumstances, everybody, life has side effects. All of life has side effects. I don't care who you are. Life has a side effect. And there's great ones and there's not so great ones. So I shared with you, I've had amazing experiences. I've had the best of the best and the worst of the worst. And yet, um, what keeps me moving forward? What ma- what makes me move forward? Well, to begin with, your circumstances never define your future. Never, ever do your circumstances define the future. Your choices define the future. That's what defines it. So my choices, after going through all of this, were to be a resource. I'm a resource because of what I've gone through. I'm an expert on PTSD the hard way. (laughs) I got PTSD the hard way, and I learned about it the hard way. So, you know, people, every human being has challenges, but it's what you do with those challenges. So, you know, part of it was writing the book, because even though my what if segment, your listeners may not be able to relate to the specific things that happened to me, what they do relate to is the emotion, because pain and suffering is pain and suffering. And we, we are taught in kind of a strange way we're taught that it's not okay to not feel good. It's not okay. But the, actually the whole idea is there's a whole spectrum of emotion. And if you, if you don't go in both directions, you get stuck in the middle. You, you, you get stuck in neutral. And that's what you see happening now. You see it happening to a tremendous amount of teenagers. I do a lot of work with teens. I do a lot of work with parents. Um, I do a lot of, of interventions with people who, who their pain and suffering is so great, they, they've gotten to a crossroad, and the crossroad is, do I want to go or do I want to stay? And when I talk to people like that, this is the question I ask them. Do you want to get out of pain or do you want to leave? If you want to get out of pain, I can show you, tell you how to get out of pain. I I can do that. I've had to do it over and over again. I can show people how to do that. If you want to leave, I would just like to remind you that leaving may not not, um, remove what you think it will remove because I, I went out of my body, and so I understand that it's not the way most people see things. They, they think they're, the me part of them is their body. Well, it is not. The me part of you, your soul, so to speak, when you're in human form, your soul is your conscience is what it is. It, your conscience lives inside of you. And when you leave like I did, you know, I went up against the ceiling and looked at myself and went, this is very strange. Um, why is the me part of me disconnected from the physical part? So it's a journey that we take. It's not a destination. So many people treat their lives like it's a destination. It it is a journey. We take one step at a time, and we learn to balance. And we learn that from resources. That's where we get it from, resources. 
Um, wow. This has been amazing. I mean, you've already opened the door for so much for everyone to be thinking about. And I am so glad that you're going to be able to share with us some of the lessons that you have already just touched on. So we are going to take a little break here. And uh, if you are new to this program, this is called Courage to Overcome, and you're definitely in the right place if you find that you've got a challenge that you're trying to go through and get to the other side of it because Gary is helping you right here to understand more about these circumstances than maybe you've thought of before. So we'll be back in just a moment. This is Courage to Overcome. I'm Cheryl Jennings, your host, and you're listening to BBM Global Network. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interests through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. All right. Well, I'm glad that you're joining us tonight. And Gary King has opened the door for so many thoughts of wisdom that I just love. One of the things that you said, Gary, that really I just I love the way you put it. You know, our our circumstances never define us. And that is so true. I remember back 51 years ago seeing a billboard that said happiness is a state of mind not circumstances. And that has always stayed with me. And when we have had so many challenges of having a child with special needs, that one thought has helped me so much to help other people understand that you don't have a choice sometimes about what happens to you. Those things have have happened. You can't go back in the past. But what you can do is change your attitude about the way you will face that challenge, and that is your choice right there. So I, I appreciate so many things that you brought out, but that one thing right there just rings a bell with me because that is so true. We can't change what happens most of the time. We do. I mean, it is a result of choices many times, but like if it happens to a family member that you didn't have any control over these things, but you've inherited a situation like, I now have a son with cerebral palsy who's almost 47, and we are facing a lot of challenges with him. At the same time, my mother is 97, and we're facing this last week I've gone through having to help move her to skilled care, a choice she never wanted us to have to make, but it, it, it happened. But I could either be gloomy about it, or I can go on and do what I'm doing now, which is try to focus on helping other people by sharing some experiences that we go through and how you face those. So I'd like for you just to continue. You just take off and go because you've got an amazing (laughs) thing to talk about. 
Well, just to add to what you just said, I, I took care of my mother for 37 years, and I took care of my grandmother for about, oh, 20 years. So my grandmother lived to 96. My mom passed away at 87. Um, and I wish, I wish I would have been, um, I wish I would have learned how to communicate with my mother about what my sister and I had to do um, when she developed dementia, it, it just, you, you, you don't, I didn't have any resources. I didn't know anything about it and it, and it came really quick. So yeah, our, our circumstances, again, our circumstances don't define our future. Our choices do. And we are, we are here to take a journey and it's not a journey of, Hey, this isn't fair. <laughs> it's a journey Okay, it's a journey about balance. So so let me touch on a couple of things really quickly here. So when a person goes through grief and loss, it's a cycle. And all humans go through grief and loss. Nobody can escape that. Um, It it happens in different ways. In in my case, you know, people die, pass away of, of a natural death. What I went through is not natural. That's not a natural process. But what you go through is a grief and loss cycle. Many people don't even know there's a grief and loss cycle. There's a cycle of five things. The first one is denial. The second one is anger. The third one is I should have, I could have, why didn't I? The fourth one is depression. And the fifth one is acceptance. That's a cycle. And and one thing that we're taught, unfortunately, we're taught is to suppress. We're taught to suppress emotions, which is very unhealthy to the physical body. It is extremely emotionally unhealthy to suppress. You know, there's a there's something called the five regrets. The five regrets come from Hospice International. These are the five things that when a person reaches the end of their journey, they know they're at the end of the journey, but they're cognitive, they're conscious. So there's, there's five regrets. The first one is, I wish I would have had the courage to tell people how I really felt. I wish I would have been true to myself rather than everyone else. That's self-care. Number three, I wish I would have spent more quality time with my friends and family, with the emphasis on quality time, not compliance time or judgment time. The fourth one is, I wish I wouldn't have worked so long and so hard especially at things that I didn't want to do. Statistically, in the United States, 80% of the workforce, this is not my term, this is the research, 80% of the workforce hates what they do to earn a living. Number five, I wish I would have given myself permission to be happy. Happiness is a choice. So Harvard just completed the longest happiness study ever done, 75 years. They just completed it. Cost $20 million, and it took 75 years. They followed, I believe, either 243 or 263 of the students through their whole life. And here's what they determined about happiness. It has absolutely nothing to do with materialism, money, accumulation. It has to do with deep human connection. That is the source, deep human connection. 75-year study. Wow. Longest study ever done. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. And, you know, that's basically what most of us really understand. We just put too much effort into some of the other things. This is just an amazing uh, 
and I hate to keep using that word, but it is. It's it's a wonderful time to get to listen to Gary King and the things that he's gone through, the lessons he's learned. You're listening to the right program. This is Courage to Overcome. I'm Cheryl Jennings, your host, and I'm so proud to have Gary King as my guest tonight. We will take a short break, and we will be back in just a moment. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. All right. Well, I th- I'm so glad that you came back with us for the rest of this program because Gary King is absolutely just flying through with so much information. My hand is writing as fast as I can, and I just want to go back and let Gary just take off and tell us more. Just start where you want to, Gary. Okay. So let me talk a little bit about resources. So I shared an encapsulated version of the trauma that I've gone through since five years old. Um, I actually developed, although it wasn't a term back then, I developed PTSD when I was five. And it compounded through my life until my son took his own life, and that that um, exponentially compounded it. So sure. when, I, when I talked about those things, I never had – any therapy. Therapy, when I went through a lot of that stuff, therapy wasn't even an option. Nobody even brought that to my attention. You should go get therapy. And there's also a stigma around therapy, too. People somehow think that you have to be extremely damaged or something to go to a psychologist. So when I finally came to the conclusion, after my son took his own life, in order for me to continue my journey, because statistically, the odds were against me, statistically. The odds were against me moving forward, because the percentage of parents who can't move forward is is pretty big. So here is what I did. I first went and seeked out, I did some research, because PTSD has a certain treatment. It's called EMDR. Um, There's a book about it. It was developed in 1987, I believe, by a woman in New York, EMDR therapy. EMDR, I will tell you what the first three letters stand for. Um, I can never remember the last one. Um, Um... Okay, EMDR. EMDR is based on rapid eye movement when you're asleep and your eyes bounce back and forth um, rapidly. What that's doing, your brain is resolving issues. 
when you get PTSD, your brain can no longer resolve those issues. They're outside the scope of resolution. So the first thing I did was an EMDR is eye movement desensitization in, like I said, I always can't remember the R. Anyway, it's how your brain resolves trauma. So I seeked out an EMDR therapist who, who coincidentally was five minutes from my house. So I went through uh-huh. EMDR therapy, which I highly recommend. You can, you can, you can stealth do it as well. You can, you can move your eyes back and forth really rapidly, left to right, and it will start to resolve brain issues. So I went through that therapy first. Then I reached a plateau. Like you were learning, like you were learning to snow ski, you get so far and you get stuck and you have to break through the glass ceiling or the false ceiling. So the next step I took was I found a, a psychologist who was also a clinical hypnotherapist because I've studied the human brain in depth and hypnosis for many years. And the the basis is 90% of your um, 90% of human life is subconscious and 10% is conscious. The subconscious mind does not know right from wrong, up from down. Uh, It doesn't know any of those things. It doesn't rationalize. It's a, it's a it's a storage facility. That's all it is. So it can't it can't tell good from bad. It doesn't know that your conscious mind knows that. So I seeked out just one of the top therapists in the county that I live, who also happened to be a clinical hypnotherapist. And let me define that for your listeners. There are hypnotherapists that do stop smoking, lose weight, that are not psychologists. A clinical hypnotherapist is a psychologist. They have a degree in psychology. So they understand the uh, personality and character disorders. So when I made the initial call, I told the assistant what my issue was. And the therapist, she's amazing, Dr. Shea Roop, R-O-O-P, and her husband, Bob Roop, absolutely amazing people. I wrote about them in my book, as, as well as Thomas Pettit, who's the MDR specialist. So when I showed her the full version of my background, not the encapsulated version, here's what she said to me. She said, well, I think probably six hypnosis, hypnosis sessions should do it. And I'm going... <laughs> Six hypnos- hypnosis sessions will do something about all of these things. And, um, yes, I had six sessions with her. I, and that the last one I had was, uh, I don't know, it was a couple of years ago. Um, and the process is she records them. She gives you the CD. You play it every day until your next appointment. So the reason I bring that up is because people really get stuck. They fight with themselves not realizing that they have a subconscious part of their brain that that they're it's always working against what they're trying to do. They're trying to move forward and the subconscious is pulling people back. So when you realize, see, here's what most people do. Most all humans manage the effects of their life. They do not manage the cause. People go, what do you mean? And I go, well, there's an original cause. What's the original cause? Well, you either grow up with self-worth or you grow up without self-worth or low self-worth. That is the original cause. And you go through your life managing the effects of the original cause. So if you grow up like most, especially in this century, the 21st century, self-worth is the lowest it's ever been in in this country, the lowest. Well, if you're managing the effects of low self-worth, you'll do that your whole life until somebody wakes you up. That's why I call my next book The Awakening. Wake up. You're managing effects of low self-worth. You want to change and manage the effects of healthy self-worth. 
What's interesting is my last two major talks, one in New Jersey, one in London, I asked the audience, I asked the audience a significant question, which I'll go over in the, in, after the break, but it, okay. it's very telling. Oh, I can't the wait. The question <laughs> I asked is very telling. I, I'm, okay, well, I am just, um, can't wait to hear what your question is or what you've what you're going to tell us next. We do need to take another break and you're listening to Courage to Overcome. And this is your host, Cheryl Jennings. And I have the privilege of having Gary King on here tonight. He's written a book called The Happiness Formula. It is for sale on on Amazon. And we're going to take a, a short break. We'll be right back. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit wikiwags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit mywikiwags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Okay. Well, Gary, uh, to wrap up, telling us as much as he can, and he has <laughs> hours of education. So I know that you're going to want to get the book he's already written and you're Want you will want to get the future book. So, Gary, go ahead and tell us as much as you can. I think you were going to tell us okay. three foundational parts of life, oh, also. <laughs> sure. So, so here's here's what I did. I, I okay. did these two major talks, one in New Jersey and one in London, and I asked a question to the audience. There were three hundred, three, three or four hundred people in the audience, and I said, "Okay, raise your hand and tell me." one, two, or three of the 20 foundational traits of healthy self-worth. In New Jersey, nobody could do it. Nobody Mm. in the room knew one of them. In London, um, probably five or six people knew two or three of them. And they went, well, if you don't know what the traits are, how could you practice them if you don't even know what they are? And that's what I was referring to. So, I'm going to jump because I want to get as much in as I can. I want to jump to the formula I created, why I put it in the in the context of the periodic table, because it appears that way. F2, HT2, SW equals HF to the power of 10. That is 30 years of research. That was me sitting at my desk going, how am I going to test this concept? So I had it embroidered on a baseball cap. I had the formula embroidered on it. says the happiness formula. And I wore it around for several years, and I had thousands of people internationally ask me what the formula meant. Mm-hmm. And, and so it's not gender-specific. It's not age-specific. Um and I was checking to see who is who is fully engaged in the explanation. So here's the short version. This is 30 years of research. 
So when I worked in the personal development industry, I noticed three significant things. That all of that time spent all over the world, six million people filtered through those those events. I did thousands of interviews. I noticed three things that were omitted. So every intervention, every participant who had issues, these three elements were missing, either one or all three. So the F and the two, the F stands for forgiveness, and the two means there's two parts. You have to forgive yourself and other people. Well, right off the bat, I'm going to say something that probably a lot of your listeners may not understand. Forgiveness is a skill. It's not happenstance. It's not accidental. It's a skill. You have to learn the skill to forgive because people resist it. But not only do they resist it, they don't even know how to do it. (laughs) They don't have – they're always like, you don't understand what was done to me. No, forgiveness is a gift. You give it to yourself. It doesn't have anything to do with the offender. So the HT2 is you have to be honest with yourself and you have to be truthful with other people. Don't start making up all these reasons called cognitive dissonance to justify the lies that you tell because there's two laws that everybody is subject to these two laws, the law of compounding and the law of cause and effect. So, And then the SW is self-worth. And it equals happiness and fulfillment to the power of 10 because it's subject to the law of compounding. So everything you do compounds. So behavior compounds. So healthy behavior compounds. Random acts of kindness compound. Self-care compounds. And you know, people... I talk to people all the time. They go, well, I go for my yearly physical or I go for my yearly dental check. Well, have you gone for your yearly visit to a psychologist? Why would I do that? Because there are things, the people around you, even though they have great intentions, your family, your friends, they have also what's called vested emotional interests which means there is a risk involved in communicating and trying to resolve things, emotional issues, with the people, your peers, your friends. They have, they have vested emotional interests. So there's a risk. There's a risk of reje- rejection. There's a risk of judgment. There's a risk of abandonment. Oh, my God. Imagine being abandoned by your significant other or your friend because you shared how you felt and you got abandoned. See, when you go, and that's what I do. I work with people all over the world on a daily basis, um, constantly. And that that's just a result of my journey. I mean, I, I, as the old saying goes, great wisdom comes from great pain. That's where great wisdom comes from. I never learned wisdom from books. I learned knowledge from books, and then I applied it. Like the number one resource for forgiveness, number one resource on planet Earth, Forgive for Good by Dr. Fred Luskin. Number one resource for forgiveness. That should be a must-read all high school students should have to read that. All human beings should have to read that. How will you ever have a deep human connection, which is the source of true happiness, if you don't learn how to forgive yourself and other people? You, you can't. And, you know, you don't have, Gary, this yeah. is something I've noticed, too, with people where we've lived, that sometimes people that are in the greatest emotional despair – it goes back to something that they are struggling with. They never forgave somebody or themselves oh, oh, no for question. something that might have happened or, you know, and they don't know how to do that. So that's, you've really hit on something that is, is oh. really uh, something that Jesus tried to teach his disciples when he said, they asked him, how many times do I need to forgive somebody? And he said, 70 
times seven. In other words, yes. without counting. Yes. <laughs> Just do That's it. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Unlimited. Well, we need to take so. our last break here, and when we come back, I want Gary to tell us uh, how we can reach him again and uh, give you a little bit of that information. So we'll be right back in just a moment. This is BBM Global Network, and I'm Cheryl Jennings, your host on Courage to Overcome. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knutson's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knutson is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a triumphant achievement, and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. Well, I know that you probably would love to know how to reach Gary and be able to ask him some questions. You may want him to come and speak for you, or you may have some information that you feel like you would like to share with him. So, Gary, tell them, tell the audience how they might be able to reach you and uh, uh, just in any way that you'd sure. like to. Okay? Sure. So email-wise, it would be Gary at GaryKingLive.com. Gary at GaryKingLive.com. I uh, love it. You can go on. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know why I picked Gary King Live, right? People go, I do. Kind of very it has familiar. just sort of a ring yes, to like it. Yes, like Larry King Live, that kind of right. familiar. <laughs> uh, um, um, another way, I have numerous Facebook pages I have my personal one, which is Gary King. Then I have Gary King Live, which has on my personal page stays full at 5,000. But people can message me. Even if you're not on my page, you can message me. Anybody can do that. So I'm on there constantly, and I post you know, usually twice a day. I've, I've posted since 2009 and I don't do pictures of me eating cheeseburgers by the way it's all inspirational <laughs> stuff and and there's threads created that are very interesting threads um, because I'm a divergent thinker um, I I use Facebook as a um, I do it as behavior research a lot of its behavior research to see how people respond to certain questions and things and yes, absolutely. I I would love for people to contact me. I always return um, people's emails. Always. It, it it may there may be a time lag, but I always return them. Um, I want to leave your listeners with a quick thought or two. This is an exercise, and this is profound. It's really quick, and it'll change a whole person's life. And really. It, in regard to relationships. So on a piece of paper, write down the top five qualities you look for in a person you want to have a relationship with, the top five qualities in order of importance. There's no right or wrong answers. OK, 
Okay. So right down the top, if you're in a relationship, the top five qualities that you you chose the person for, write them down. You got 60 seconds to do it. It's an exercise that is profound. And like I said, no right or wrong answers. So the next time I'm on, I, I will give you what that exercise is all about. And it is life changing. I've done it for years. Um, the other okay. one is the 24 hour truth challenge. <laughs> oh, well, I can't wait to hear all about that. As you see, we have had a lot of fun on the show tonight and we've learned a lot. And I really appreciate Gary being a guest on here and being able to share so many of the experiences that he's gone through. Be sure and look for his book, The Happiness Formula, on Amazon. And I mentioned earlier that I have a book that's new that's out there called It Takes Courage to Be a Caregiver. I'm very interested in helping people become better caregivers and to help them understand that there is help out there. And, Gary, one of the things I've tried to help with are families who have special needs, special needs children, the divorce rate is like about 90 percent or more. So what I understand from having gone through that situation, and now we are soon to celebrate our 51st anniversary in August, is that a lot of it comes down to communication. And if we can help people with that problem and help them understand how to resolve some of the issues, not only within the family, but with the therapist, with the educators, with anybody who's working with them. That's my mission on this world. So that's what I do as well. Next week, next week we will be on at eight o'clock central, nine o'clock Eastern. I'll look forward to you being with us again on courage to overcome. I'm closing out. This is Cheryl Jennings. Happy July 4th. You've been listening to Courage to Overcome with your host, Cheryl Jennings. Be it Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, or autism. Listen each week for an informative look into the lives of those challenged by these and other disabilities today on the next episode of Cheryl Jennings' Courage to Overcome. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.